All right. You are listening to music from Degs, who is in studio with us. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wait. Thank you, first of all, for waking up at the crack ash of dawn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, but you know. <laughs> I know. Well I know, it. but you made it. I'm so yeah. glad you're here. Absolutely. No, happy to be here. We were listening to Kuruka, right? Yes, yes. When did that song come on? Kuruka was what? I think 2016? 2016. 2016. Yeah, time flies. Crazy. <laughs> so, for those who may not know you, yeah, which is hard. <laughs> Please yeah. introduce yourself. Um, so I go by the name Degs, um, a producer, singer, songwriter, and rapper. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, musical lover and uh, creator of good things. Nice. Yeah. Um, you have been in the music industry for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say we were introduced to you with Scamares or was it before 100, that? hundred percent. I mean, I had done some work in the past, but like as a producer. Right. Um, under under um, Tim Rimbui, Innovate, Innovator. Nice. And then and worked with Eric Wainaina, but those were projects that, you know, you just get like lin linear credits. Right. So Scamarays was like now me as an artist. Uh -huh. And that's what launched me into, into the industry. Awesome. Yeah. That was one of the biggest hits for <clears throat> quite a long time. How was yeah. the feeling like when it came out? Yo, it was crazy. I remember like back in the day, like I feel like the music industry then was like really vibrant, especially yeah. like africa like mtv base had set up mm. it was just like people were still on the conventional ways of like listening to and watching videos and right. listening to music so i remember like we premiered it the video on mtv base across africa yeah and like you know in the minute it, it was out there guys were going crazy right. i think to date like it's still a huge song in like ug and the like so it's like it's i i we literally talking about it yesterday with a friend of mine and he was yeah. like the song plays in the States all the time. Right. So it's just like, I think it's just one of those songs that's part of Kenyan, Kenyan culture and Kenyan, you know, Kenyan music. So 100%. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to be a part, to have been a part of that project. Actually, it also plays a rotation here because we're all about throwback <laughs> therapy Man. over here on this show. So always taking it back. Yeah. And kind of like reminiscing. <clears throat> and you're right. It was very, very vibrant. Like, especially the early uh, 2010s yeah. going down. It was mad. It was, there, was this, there was a wave, man. It was, it was so fun. Right. It was so fun. And I think like also like, you know, I was also much younger then. So it was just like, you know, you just you're just enjoying it, doing everything like carefree. Yeah. There was a wave of like Camp Mula. There yeah. was, you know, Saudi Soul were right. just starting out as well. There was just like everybody was just buzzing. It was it was a good time. It was a good Actually, time it's a time when style and music, our own style and music kind of like meshed. Yeah. We got to see like the you're saying, not only color in the music, but also in the style of dressing. Absolutely. And stuff. True. Like it was just vibe. True. And like those are like the early days of blankets and wine. Yeah. You know. It was it was such a like I don't know whether like every generation looks back at a time like yo those were good times yes of but course. those were definitely good times for us it was a new wave of that time yeah for sure now where is your foundation from where did you get started how did you get started into <clears throat> music to begin with I think like that just that just stems from you know perhaps you know genetics number one my mother loved mm. loved music my sister loved music so I guess like around the house we're always singing and, nice. and stuff and then got into school and obviously then was, you know, motivated to like do music. Right. So I learned a couple of instruments, got into orchestras and, Ooh. and yeah, and played in brass bands and stuff. Oh, so wow. that was, that was my background and just like music. So you were the full <clears throat> music geek, like you yeah, were in yeah. it. I was in it. I was in it. Wow. And then, you know, life happens and you go, you know, you start focusing more on academics, right? Um, uni and the likes. And then at some point, um, got an internship at Eric Wanaina Studio yeah. and Tim Rimbui. And then now that's when I started learning like the actual production of music. Right. And then thought, okay, you know what? Maybe I should be singing on a track or two. Yeah. And that's just, it, it kind of just like spawned from that. But like it literally started when, when I was a kid. Actually, the time for Eric Wanaina and Innovator was the time for Tinker Tinker Tales, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a fuel on musical. So your music prowess was going <clears throat> deep into that as was, well. And I was like, I was learning so much because like they, I was thrown into the deep end. So I was literally like cutting things for Tinker Tinker, learning how to use the software, yeah. backing up things, doing um, recording sessions on my own recording, like Atemi and Chris Adwar. And right. So it was like, there was a lot going on that I was just like, damn. <laughs> this is this is music 
it was um it was really it was actually one of the most um enjoyable experiences of my life just I learning can imagine. From, yeah learning from the greats and at 18 i remember when um eric's album came out love and protest yeah you know seeing my name there like as you know studio right. engineer i was like yo you know i felt like i had worked with michael jackson and I can it, was, imagine. it was surreal yeah because both of them are like when you meet both of them even individually you can always tell like it's always working up there you know yes. like yeah. sometimes like my hamster is jogging there's <laughs> running you know Sprints. It's, it's going on manyala. <laughs> <laughs> mad, mad. So, um, you took um, quite a break. Yeah. Um, and you explained it at your listening party. Yes. Seven years. Seven years, apparently. <laughs> what was the process like <clears throat> at that time? Was it imposter syndrome? Was it like, okay, I just need to take a break from all of this and get into something new? Yeah. I don't know. I to be honest, it wasn't really thought out. Like, it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to take a break. Yeah. It was just like, okay, you know, you release one song, give it a, cup, a couple of months, release another one, give it a couple of months. So then you realize you're not releasing any songs. You're just giving a couple of months, giving a couple <laughs> right. of months. And months turned into years. And then <clears throat> you ask yourself, like, oh, yeah, what am I doing? And you find you've gotten into other businesses yeah. and other things that are, like, you know, also rewarding. Yeah, but you're like, all right, you know, I'll get, I'll get back into music eventually, and time just flew by. Right, time flew by. I had no idea that, you know, it had been seven years until right. I actually looked back and I'm like, wait, the last song I released was 2017. And I'm like, damn, that's mm. that's a long time ago. Right, and as I was saying, like, I think COVID also really sped things up because right. like it was you know two three years where nothing was really happening mm. so that in itself was just like where did the time go right yeah so we're going to take a short break like i told you i swiped your <laughs> <laughs> that's yours girl <laughs> thank you let me sell it to something but um first of all uh we'll be div- digging deep into your um listening party which is an amazing experience um and more into your music but we'll just take a little bit of step back because like we're, we're, we're trying to now you know remind ourselves who dex was Go through the journey the, the Dex journey. journey the journey we want to take ourselves back to you know you know a bit of the origins um take it back to of course Scabares, yeah, you know yeah uh, yes. All the way back. All the way back. Yeah. And then now bringing now into the now. Uh, of course, you guys are listening to Degs this morning exclusively on Icon Radio. And yeah. today we usually celebrate our icons, our icon of the day. So Yo. you today, virtue of being here, are, yeah, you are our icon of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to be sampling more of its music. Keep it right here. Of course, if you do have any questions or comments, hit us up on plus two five four seven eight eight three eight double zero three zero. Basically, um, in other words, your love is the ish. Yes. But <laughs> broken down. Broken down. <laughs> broken down. Just so you get the elements. Aha. Yeah. Um, I just love the title of that song. It's, it's simply your love is like, but you explained, of course, the sugar, <laughs> yes. honey, iced tea. Yes, yes. yes. And it just um, what I got from um, this album, which we'll be looking at a lot. Uh, I mean, we'll be looking at later. Is there's a lot of like love tones in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a love loving album. <laughs> yes, we understand the season you are in. Yes. we saw you gushing on stage <laughs> last week, but we'll be delving into that <laughs> in just a little bit. Yeah. So, um. Last year, you um, removed, you, you released a song with Abbas. Yes, Creep. yes, yes. Abbas Kuba. Abbas had just come back. Yeah. After yeah. being away for a very long time. Yeah, I caught him, like, literally. It was a very unique encounter. Okay. We met in a club. I uh-huh. met him, just bumped into him, and I was like, hey, bro, I, I'm such a huge fan. Uh-huh. I love your music, man. You know, one day, I would love to do something. He's like, yo, why not today? And oh, huh. we literally left. It was a boxing day, I think. And we literally uh-huh. left the club and went back to the studio. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, see, Abbas has always just been legendary for that. No, a you. real OG. Actually, I, I think I need to just hit him up and say, hey, man. Because, no, he's he's a, he's one of a kind, man. And he's lyrically he one of the most gifted artists I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting. A hundred percent. Like, his wordplay is nuts. Insane. I actually, I told him, I think, like, you know, he's lyrically, like, it's... It's almost like he's on the spectrum. Like right. he's the way he thinks of words mm-hmm. is different. 
is completely different. Like it's not it's not something that can be taught. It's not it's just unique. A hundred percent. First of all, like how is it getting on the track with it? Especially on Boxing Day. Like you guys are on yeah. vibes of the club, and then you get into straight into the studio. It must have been Yeah, and it was I was you know, it was it was my home studio. So he came through ah. and you know, so of course, you know, as a fan, it's like, yo, man, a bus is actually and the crazy thing is like it's really full circle because when I when I was working with Tim Rimbui, who was their producer for K South, yeah. yeah, like I would be learning, you know, how to produce and a lot of the instruments i was learning to produce were the instruments that made the k south albums and i loved k south so much yeah so it was like yo man like i've worked with tim i learned how to produce from tim i'm doing this track with him it just felt i was like damn man this this is you know this has happened right know? so it was it was quite something and just like i had tracks of his that he hadn't heard in years mm. and some that i'd like you know secretly jacked from the studio and i played him some and he's like what i haven't heard this since i recorded it so it was, a, it was a dope session. It was a really cool session. First of all, somebody stole that album. You know the first album we had with yes, Fire? Yes. Somebody's And I've, re, I've been hurting ever since. And I'm like, how do I get that <laughs> album back? Because I've got it on Spotify Yo. and everywhere. And I can't find it. It's driving me crazy. Do you know what? <laughs> I don't know. I'll look for it. I'll see. So, because, yeah, those are, those are some of the gems that, like, you find are not online. Yeah, at all. There could have been, like, you know copyright issues with yeah. whatever but you're like where where can you get that music listen i'm stalking you <laughs> i just need you to hit me up with that stuff okay so you had turned in your body with my tracks loved love yes. love yeah. love love that vibe of that song yeah loved it Thank you. and that was um in which year that would have been i want to say 2015 2015 yeah you yeah. also we heard kuruka and yes. bala as well yes so you were on that um single single singles yeah. so what got you now into getting now into a full body of like doing the ep yeah i think it was like literally it was that you're like you know i think as an artist everything i grew up with you know we grew up with cds right so it's like you know singles weren't really a thing yeah. especially here like you know you would hear the single but then like it's because an album is coming out yeah and so I was, i've always known that i've got to put out a body of work mm -hmm. it just never materialized um back then because mm -hmm. it was like you know i'm also just trying to establish myself in the industry and singles just made sense and then time passed mm -hmm. and i was like you know what if i'm coming back i right. have to come back with this body of work right and also because i think it gives you a lot more longevity in terms of your shelf life, in terms of like what people can consume, what mm. you can perform. So like I would be on stage and I have a lot of music I can perform, but not, of it, not a lot of it is out. Mm -hmm. So I was also like, you know what? Let's put it out so we can perform to people who actually know the songs. Right. Yeah. Out of, the, the songs, yeah. out of the EP, which is that one song that I'd sat in the back burner for a long time. Ooh. <laughs> Um, because I remember on stage you were saying, Yeah, the times you just play for your boys in the car or in yeah. the house, and they were like, Listen, if you're not putting this out, it's not up, boss. friends. <laughs> boss, <laughs> boss had really, really sat. Oh, boss had really sat. You can't even tell listening to it, it sounds so you know what? That's that's kind of why, like, I shy away from like saying when when they were recording, you can't they tell, <laughs> you can't tell. That's yes, how amazing yeah. it is. You can't tell. <laughs> that's always what I try to do, like, it's it's sort of what i imagine i would want to hear like in 10 15 years from myself yeah is stuff that's timeless timeless that's, i can't you can't put like a period on it and say right. hey, this must have come out during you know this era or this yeah i sort of want to make just timeless music that doesn't necessarily fit into like the sound of the day yeah yeah it's kind of futuristic because i was listening to it it has a blend of some of the stuff that's being listened to today yes yeah so yeah. You shouldn't be shying away from that. You're like, listen, I saw this yeah, a was, long time ago. I like I had the, the foresight, okay? <laughs> I had it in me already. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, we did we did do a little tweaking just to give it like a little, you know, um, a little, you know, sound that's like still relevant. Right. But like 90% of the track yeah. was produced a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your process like? Like what is a Degs moment when you're now getting into your zone? Yeah. Um, I think two things because I'm like a producer and an artist mm -hmm. and there are two things that I like 
I love being the artist, mm-hmm. the producer as well. I, I find it so frustrating a lot of the time because I start making a beat because that's how you'd start. And yeah. then I get carried away by writing to it. So now I'm like, okay, I, I don't finish the beat because I'm just like, I want to record to it. So it's yeah. like the process is usually quite long when I'm, when I'm working on a solo project. Uh-huh. But um, when I'm working with like other producers, it's just like, get me in a booth, get, 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 the, get the beat on or right. you know, the keys and, and I'll write. And I'll write and just find a flow. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so the the process is usually like quite smooth if it's just if I'm if I'm away from it. Okay. If I'm not too involved in the in the beat making. Yeah. The beat making I overthink it like crazy. So would you call yourself a recording or performing artist? I think what most people have is I guess I'm definitely I'm definitely both because mm-hmm recording i'm i'm such a fan of recording because i'm a producer and there's a way that i like my sound to sound Mm -hmm. so you know i stack my vocals a certain way um do certain things a certain way so that that's like what makes me the recording artist i am but yeah everything i record i'm thinking about how do i how will i perform it on stage right and genuinely as an artist i think the thing i look forward to most is performing on stage for people because i think it gives them a different a different interpretation of the song mm-hmm. and that's why even at my gig it was sort of like you can do so many things on stage you can take it acoustic you can you know strip down the sets and it's honestly something that i learned from um my my brother mad tracks when we would come to like performing mm-hmm. we would like arrange the track so differently from how it's actually like played on radio and the likes right. So it becomes like really interesting. People are hearing like just one set of instruments, then it comes into like the bass. So I love, I love like creating sets for for performances. Right. Yeah. You you write everything yourself. Yes. Yeah. That's mad. <laughs> like writing isn't easy. Believe me, I've tried. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. not easy. It doesn't come to somebody just like that. Yeah. No. I think yeah, writing is it is tricky. It definitely is, and mm. I think with time you sort of get you get a feel for it. And yeah. I think also it helped me being around certain people when, when I was, when I was starting out, just yeah. seeing their process, what people write about, um, and then kind of finding my lane. Yeah. And, and knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm the lover man. I'm, I'm gonna, uh-huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing to the ladies. I'm nice. gonna sing, you know, about love. And, and you can't really run out of like content with love. It's just, you know, it, it'll find new ways to present itself. And I love it because a lot of you guys now are more coming back into uh, that love period. We did, you know, around uh, the 2020s at the onset, uh, did have a lot of gengeton. Yes, yes. And you get either or (laughs) of the (laughs) spectrum. Yeah. But now having the love songs coming out, it's just just a different breath of fresh air. Yeah, I like it. And I like it as well. And that's why I was like, this, this is a lover's album 100 percent i'm an r&b baby so like Mm. you know love is love is such a a central theme in r&b yeah so you know i guess it's it's somehow like second nature to me because that's like the music i fell in love with as a kid yeah so like when i think of writing i'm I'm immediately thinking of like usher donnell jones Uh you know and i'm like you know what would they say if they were dex <laughs> okay yeah. now I'm waiting for your performances after <laughs> you know that was just a listening that, party yes now I'm waiting for the performances yeah. if those are the ones <laughs> you're you know crafting it under now speaking of influences who would you say are your major influences both here and abroad um i, th- I honestly my, my influences are so wide so mm. wide because like I I genuinely like started playing guitar and things like that inspired by like Tracy Chapman. Yeah. And I think even my voice developing into like the sound it is is because I used to sing her songs, guys yeah. like Craig David, um Usher Boys to Men. Mm-hmm. Um those are kind of the people that I grew up listening to and would sort of, you know, write down the lyrics, sing the songs and that's how I sort of crafted my sound. But then also at the same time, like my sound also is like from Shaggy, you know, like nice. the the Burner Boys, like yeah. this little like gritty dance all sort of flow. Yeah. Hip hop, Biggie. So like because I, I literally do a lot of different flows in my music so yeah. I, and I can switch from 
rapping to singing. And so I guess those have been my influences. And mm-hmm. I just like pick from, you know, whatever the vibe feels. If it's like a dancehall track, like I'll feel a little shaggy, like, you know, uh, inspiration coming in. Yeah. And, you know, try and mix it with something else. So it's like, I guess it depends on what, what kind of song it is. Right. Yeah. All right. We'll take a little bit of a small break again. We'll be delving more into your music. Still listening to um, tracks of Mr. Bull. We'll also be finding out why Mr. <laughs> Bull for a love album. Because <laughs> my inter- the interpretations in my head are so <laughs> many at this time. So <laughs> let us break it down yeah. right after this. Me all of you. I don't know why you ever stop. Like, she just continues <laughs> singing. <laughs> I love it, love it. First of all, I was already on my, you know, dance Wine. hall. Like, ah, yeah. I was so <laughs> with it. It's such a vibe. Guys here in studio also going mad over it. Oh, bless. Um, our um, producer, yeah. Bosco, is also feeling one time. One time for the one time. Uh, hey, so he's, throwing, he's throwing it into the dance hall show as That's well. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Pull it, Bosco. Pull, Pull it. it. Now, let's delve into Mr. Bull. Yeah. That is the name. El Toro. El Toro. Uh, hey. El Toro. So why Mr. Bull for this? For this for this particular, you know what? Mm-hmm. It's the most grueling thing having to come up with a name for an album. I can First. imagine. <laughs> like, I think if you don't have like a theme that like, because I didn't think, let me put together an album, then make the songs. Yeah. So it was like, I made the songs and I was like, okay, let's put them together and then figure out what we're going to call it. Yeah. And so you go through all these names and I was like, you know, bull is what my name means in Kikuyu. Mm. So Degwa means bull. Right. Which is where Degs, Degs comes from, right? Okay. <clears throat> in case you don't know. <laughs> okay. Then I'm also a Taurus. Ah. So the bull is significant in my life for many reasons. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Bull is a name that my my parents have been calling me from when I was a kid. Oh, nice. So I had an uncle who I'm named after. He was Uncle Bull. Then yeah. like, I was like Mr. Bull. So it's just, it was a name that I had for a very long time. Right. And as my first body of work, I was like, I don't want to call it Degs. I don't, you know, I was like, you know what? Let it just be something that en- encompasses what I what I grew up with and what I am now. So Very Mr. Nice. Bull just was fitting. Very nice. Yeah. El Toro, the Taurus. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, let's take it back to the listening party. Yeah. Which I thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you. had you. us fed. You had us <laughs> drinking. Hey. That is how to throw it down. That's okay. What I'm and of course the vibes is all the music. And it was acoustic. It was an acoustic yes. set. A little acoustic thing. What made you go with acoustic as opposed to a full band? You know what? <clears throat> I've I've done a full band before and mm-hmm. I, I I love the sound of a band, but I think there's just something special when things are stripped down. A hundred percent. And I've I've always been such a fan of like hearing a song. I would, I'd love acoustic versions of songs. Mm. I find like there's like there's just like a vulnerability, there's there's just something unique you can find from a different interpretation of the song. Yeah. So I was like, let me give people something different from songs that, you know, they they've probably heard before. Yeah. And um so yeah, that was the inspiration. Just give people something different. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. I want to go to girl through and through and I loved it. Damn. It brought out the essence to be honest. Yeah. And you had a good um you had a good um BGVs yes, behind yeah, you. Top, top, top guys. The, the, the also the, the guy on the, it was an the electric guitar. Yeah, yeah. Also, ooh, vibes, <laughs> vibes as well. Yeah. It was it all just meshed together well, and your Thank DJ you. also did the thing as yeah, well. Like yeah. it all came together, um, quite nicely. Against an amazing backdrop. I loved the backdrop of the club. The city. The city was city behind. Lights. It was so well thought out. Thank you. Um, but what I love the most, um was how you created that sort of like brand loyalty to your album. Yes. That was cleverly done through the cocktails, okay? <laughs> yes. Because that's the best way for me to remember. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, like, yes. Mm. I want a J, J Black, because they're not, <laughs> they're not paying me yet. Yeah, yeah. But yes, yet. I want a J Black <laughs> <laughs> yes. together with this and that. Yeah. And that brings together your love. It's like, you Bam. know. Yes. What was the thought process behind now this 
uh, listening party. So I think like for me, I'm always trying to like come up with creative ways to like marry my brand and this brand. Mm -hmm. And it's in, in my music, in what I do, it's like, okay, how do I tell two stories at the same time? Yeah. Um, and make it authentic and, mm -hmm. and present it in a way that is not like, ah, uh, he's promoting, he's, you know, because that's like the standard. And please drink this. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, you know, initially I'd wanted to do like a, a little tasting. and yeah. have, But I was like, you know what, that 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 would take away also from the essence of, of what the night is. So, you know, let, let people taste on their own. But like, mm -hmm. let's just like theme it. So every every track on the album has a, a dedicated cocktail that, right. you know, speaks to the song in some way. Yeah. So that was that was the idea. And I think. I think it came out pretty nice and yeah. I think, you know, people enjoyed the songs and the and the cocktails. A hundred percent. I was like, let me have a your, your love is like and <laughs> I'm gonna have two like your love is you. likes. <laughs> <laughs> it made so much sense. Yeah. Um the album. Now that let's uh, delve into the album. Yeah. Um this is uh which was part of the album where now it was intentionally because you have the singles that you yeah did, which which <clears throat> were the part of the album which was intentionally made now, I mean for the E P. Yeah, yeah. I think when, so I think when the the track started coming together, it was mm -hmm. just like, okay, this has to this has to be on it, and this yeah. then this has to be on it. Then yeah. it was like, there were tracks like I hadn't put on the EP initially, like Need You, yeah. and I was like, it felt like a different, it felt like a different. At first, I was like, no, this doesn't really fit, and I was yeah. like, no, but it does. Then. I was also, I was going and figuring it out as I go along, to yeah. be honest. Um, and so I think the ones that definitely, like, I knew created the sound mm. was One Time. Mm. Um, one Time, Boss, and... Um, one Time, Boss, and Fire Blue. Mm. Because... Oh, sorry. One Time, Boss, and Loving You. Okay. Because... I think what they had was like they had this very casual summer feel. Yeah. Love is in the air. Yeah. It just had this, you know, it's not it's not a it's not a love letter. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're going like and saying, you know, this is dedicated to it had this thing where you feel like you could play it on a drive down to coast. Yeah. You feel like you could play it flying out to whatever. Yeah. At home. Like but it just had this vibe of like you want to be listening to it with people, right. with the one you're with. With it, it had songs you could dedicate to somebody. Yeah. So that was kind of the theme, like a summer love. Yeah. Yeah. That Especially was, that because was also the, you had your family there, so it was great to be able to play the music and yes. not cringe because you're like, oh gosh, <laughs> please don't hear that. It, it yeah. does play uh, to a lot of ages and a lot of different people. So yeah. when you're putting it together, do you have like a specific demographic in mind? Yeah, I think I mean to be honest, I I never I never really make music intentionally with like okay, this we're going to make for this age group or this it's just like whatever feels and comes out at the time. Yeah. But then now like when you start listening back you're like, "Oh man, this is some grown folk business." Yeah. You know, this is some grown right. folk yes. business. <laughs> Cuz like, you know, and you know, I know for for a fact as much as I say that, I'm only saying that because like the themes are, you know, generally grown folk. Yeah. But I know I was listening to grown folk music when I was 13, <laughs> you mm. know, so it's, I don't, I don't think people listen to music based on like a generational gap. Yeah. You know, we, you know, we listened to the Diana Rosses, we listened to, so mm -hmm. we can enjoy so much music regardless of whether we're going through it or not, or even yeah. know what heartbreak is. And it's kind of what informs how you react to heartbreaks or how yeah. you, um, how you fall in love yeah. it's, it's by listening to, to these things and listening to music and watching movies yeah so yeah I would want this uh, body of work to serve as you know as a guide to even you know the younger people it's like yeah. oh man this is this is what love should feel like exactly this is what heartbreak will feel like yeah so that's yeah it's, it's, it's grown folk and it's growing folk speaking of love um, what I love was that you're not ashamed to speak about your own because you know a lot of guys are like you know i don't want to be seen as you know because yeah. i want them to buy my music <laughs> but i think that is so played out you know because yeah. an example of love is something people want to emulate yeah how much has it 
played in your prices in your music a lot i think um a lot without even knowing mm. right so it's not as i said you know you don't go into this genre like yo i want to write a love song mm. or you know i want because i'm so in love i want to do this this and this it just kind of flows you know yeah. when you're happy you make happy music when yeah. <laughs> so it just kind of it 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 does what it does and yeah. like you end up realizing that okay damn i'm writing a lot of love songs i'm yeah. writing a lot of uh emotional songs that are coming from a place of you know happiness and yeah so yeah great grateful for it grateful for it now being a gw ambassador yeah how much are, is it going to play in now putting out music because now we want to see you on stage yeah yeah are, are we going to now <clears throat> be seeing a lot more um listening parties are we going to be seeing a lot more performances what does it look definitely. like now for mr bull definitely i mean i think you know with with just generally music you know you put it out and then you want to be in people's faces you want to perform it and that's something i'm really looking forward to and obviously working with john walker is great because they do have a lot of platforms where um you know they sponsor events and and the likes and do big gigs and the likes and so definitely you know expect to see me on those stages mm-hmm. and you know giving giving the fans what they what they want and what right. they don't know they want right. yeah. <laughs> they don't know <laughs> and now you know yeah um seven year break putting out the music that means that you have to go full steam ahead full steam panda, it's not easy panda. It isn't. It As isn't. in, like, the appreciation for what you're doing needs to be massive. <laughs> I, I, I have a full appreciation for Thank it you. because yeah. I, watching anybody's journey, it is, it takes over you mind, body, and soul. Yeah. So you putting out this EP, how far do you want to now? Do you, are you using like, you know, um, a full steam ahead, or yeah. you, you know? gonna take time with it go get it, get it back to the music what is it looking like for the future with dex you know i think that one i'm 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 back in the industry nice you know, i'm i'm definitely officially. back i'm officially back in the uh-huh. industry nice um and so for me it's just about like yo you know let's let's make some good music mm. let's let's make some good music and then let's give them good music yeah so i don't want to think too you know too hectically about like oh my gosh okay i have to give him i released this like last month like what am i going to do now next month right. it's like that's that's the rat race yeah. you know and that's kind of that's almost what got me to a point where i left without knowing because right. you release one then you're like okay what well, i don't have one then you know you you're yeah. just constantly like in this panic yeah and feeling like you owe people something yeah and Yo, let me tell you one thing I've learned in in just growing up is like at your own time man. This ain't a race, mm. it's a marathon. So, mm. you know, it's take your time and you know, when it comes it comes man. If I'd released this project um 7 years ago, it wouldn't be half of what it is today. Mm. So, I honestly believe in God's timing and I believe that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Greatness, greatness yeah. takes time. Yeah. And like you said on stage, good things comes to those who wait absolutely i i just a great way to start i was like <laughs> you know what yes <laughs> right after the clip right. after saying seven years good things come to those who wait and yeah. you know what listening to it it was a good wait it was absolutely love the album definitely on my list I I just say use it Spotify so I'm building woo, up you woo, know. Woo, woo. Yes. <laughs> Add it to the playlist. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get to the young kids nowadays, okay? Oh, I love it. So, uh, definitely on my playlist. Speaking of playlists, where can guys um get the album? You can get it everywhere where they get their music. So, Spotify, um Boomplay, Dundo, mm-hmm. um Apple Music, right. YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got the lyric videos up, so yeah. you know if you're chilling with your girls or your uh-huh. homies on a friday and you know just want to pull up something to yeah. to jam to yeah. uh youtube uh-huh. youtube the, the album it's it's all yeah. there and of course the video for your love is like is out as well mm-hmm. and you know people should check that out on youtube as well okay yeah um sorry we just have a little bit of an interruption over there no problem just a little bit or it's just to repeat that it's all on Okay, sorry about that. No so, yep. where again can guys find your music? So they can get it everywhere they like. They can get it on Spotify, Mudundo, Boomplay. 
um, Apple Music, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if they're in the club and they hear it, they can Shazam it. And right. it'll direct them to where they need to go. <laughs> right. And um, it's also on YouTube. So, you yeah. know, if they're feeling, you know, like a little girls hangout, sing, uh -huh. sing the lyrics, you know, a little sing-along karaoke style. There we go. The, the lyric videos are up as well. Nice. And, of course, the, the video uh, that we premiered last week, Friday, with Prezo is is out as well. Your Love is Like yeah is, is out on youtube and it's yes yeah, it's, it's a dope video i like it i think i think everybody will like it too so it check was it out nice. <laughs> i liked it i liked it a lot also it's also on instagram so if you want to you know attach it there to yeah. your yeah. your videos and your pictures absolutely absolutely grab it it's grab and go there. i love it i love it um what's next for decks and then where can guys find you okay um so i think i'm I'm very blessed to be, you know, to have my hand in many things. And um, I think for me right now as, as an artist, as an entrepreneur, I'm just looking to just, you know, grow my, grow myself, grow my business. Um, so you can, you, you'll find me in many spaces in events, mm -hmm. in, um, in the music industry, of course. And yeah. so I'm, I'm just looking to just get my fingers in, in a lot of little parts and right. genuinely looking also forward to growing this music industry and being right. a part of it again. Yeah. And giving people music that, you know, that they'll love for time for, for years to come. Nice. Yeah. Where can, uh, apart from, you know, finding you different spaces, socials? Yeah. Socials, you can get me, I mean, my most social social is Instagram. Yeah. And uh, so you can find me at Degs, that's N-D-E-G-Z. Yeah. That's the same for TikTok as well. Yeah. And Twitter is, or formerly Twitter X, uh -huh. is uh, Degz, that's N-D-E-G-Z-double-E. -E. Okay. And, yeah, and then YouTube Degs Music. Yeah. And that's where people can that's also find, like, if they want to book you, your booking information exactly. as well. Exactly, booking information is all there as well. Awesome. Yeah. Man, thank you so much for being with us here thank in you, the studio. Man. It's, it's been, been amazing vibing it's been with you. Pleasure, um, we're looking forward to just following your journey. And of course, you know, I'll be over here just blasting it in the studio um, whoa, whoa. for most of the week. Cool. So, yes, we usually have our jam of the week. Okay. And being that you're here this week. So, my okay. jam of the week is Your Love is Like. Ooh. So we're putting it out on our socials. Love it. And let people know where to find your song. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Dex. Thank you. Man. Guys, we've had an amazing moment with Dex. Remember, you can hit him up or just check out his music. Listen, support K music or just support music in, in totality. <laughs> and love on the album because it is giving us the feels, okay? All it's the for feels. the feels. Yes. So... We'll catch you in the next few minutes as we finish up the show. Um, continue listening to Degs as we head.